In this demo, we're going to take a look at the new Data Protector GUI. We will look at the dashboard, which has had some rebranding changes, and the scheduler, where there have been some enhancements to how workflows are created and maintained. The new Overview dashboard can be reached from the existing Data Protector MFC GUI by clicking the Home button. Once you do that, you'll end up at the dashboard view, and the first item you will see is a client overview. This is where you can view information such as which elements are installed on certain clients, giving you a clear overview of data and data types that have been backed up from this client. On the right-hand side, you will find filtering options. Here you can select from operating systems or versions of the data protector that have been installed, etc. If you click on the next tile in the overview, you will see capacity information. This is also divided up into data types and the next title over will give you an overview of your licensing status, such as which of the licenses have been deployed where and how many are actually in use. The rightmost tile provides you with information about your devices, and again, on the right-hand side, you can select and filter for certain device types. This will provide you a clean overview. Telemetry will collect information about your cell, and if you agree to it when prompted, uploads that information to our support database, allowing MicroFocus support engineers better access to the information from your cell. This is especially useful when looking for updated versions, bug fixes that may be available, and other support questions. The last and certainly the most interesting element is the new scheduler. It has changed dramatically. I will give you an overview of how the scheduler has changed. I'm going to take you through the main items. First of all, you have a monthly and a daily view, which we will look at later. And you have a couple of search and filtering options down here. This is especially useful in larger environments where you may have a couple thousand backups going on each day and finding the right backup, backup specification, or a schedule can be a time-consuming event. So you can search from here, and then you can also filter to get the overview a little crisper. Again, very useful in large environments. On the right-hand side, you will find information about the server and the scheduler status. You can see it's running right now, which is the normal state. And from a couple of drop-downs here, you can put your scheduler in maintenance mode, let's say for an hour or two, so you can apply a patch to the cell manager or perform repairs, etc. Another option that can be accessed from the drop-down is to access a missed execution queue. If a job failed to execute, it will end up here. Another new item in the scheduler is the ability to access and change global options from here. If you go to that menu, it will lead you directly to those global options. So now we will move from the monthly overview to the daily view. We have completely renovated the way daily information is displayed, providing you with quick access to information such as starting time, the backup specification name, type, and of course the status. And on the rightmost side, you can edit a selected schedule there. And if you want to do some easy scheduling, you can do that from here as well. We also made sure that you can select a couple of items at a time to enable, disable, or even to delete them very quickly. This is all aimed at large automated systems where you're dealing with a couple thousand backups running each per day. Again, you have some searching and filtering options here as well, because as I said earlier, you could have a couple thousand schedules running. The changes in the scheduler really provide support for those working in larger environments where searching for schedules can be very time consuming. Now I will quickly show you how to create new schedules in a graphical way. You can also do it with the REST API and some other command line options. But for this demonstration, we'll stick to the graphical way. First, the system will display all the backup specifications that are available on your system. When you click one of them, it becomes highlighted. You then click Next. You can then select from some predefined schedules, or you can select custom schedules, which allows you to define individual options. You may also want to give it a name at this point. You then select from backup type, such as full or incremental, and the retention time. If you want to override what is already set up in the backup spec, Data Protector 10 introduced a priority management. So if you select higher priority and two backup jobs are fighting for the same backup device, then the one with the higher priority will execute. We can also enable the schedule to pause lower priority jobs. So if a high priority job is coming in, it can pause a lower priority job, do its thing, and then resume the other job. 
You can also set debug lock levels. So if you want to debug a certain schedule, you can do that from here, which is a handy option. Now the next item would be the recurrence. If you want to do an hourly backup, it lets you define every hour and that it should do the backup within a certain time frame and time zone. You can see that these are the standard option types. So click Next and you will be taken to the last page where you will be shown a summary screen that lists all the individual items you have configured. Also, another new option on the bottom right-hand corner is the ability to clone a schedule from here. If you select this option, it will route you directly to the type so you don't have to browse or select through the specifications again, keeping things fast and simple. That concludes the demo for the Data Protector Dashboard and Scheduler. If you'd like to try this out in your local IT environment, you can download a 90-day full product trial from the website at microfocus.com slash data protector.